Thank you for purchasing your best shed. We know you'll enjoy your shed for years to come. This manual is only a guide to help you build your shed. Please follow all work health and safety guidelines. If you are not experienced in building or do not feel confident in attempting such works, it is recommended that you contact a licensed builder to complete the installation of your shed. A few tips before starting any work on your building. 1. Ensure you have all relevant council approvals, documents lodged, notifications given. 2. Refer to your engineering drawings for members sizes and spacings. 3. Lay out all the components of your kit and check off materials to the bill of material. 4. Ensure you have all the necessary tools and equipment to safely do the job. 5. At all times, ensure the safety of yourself and others around you. 6. It is recommended to watch this video through several times to ensure you understand the process of building your best shed. There are other ways to build your shed, but the way shown in this video is the simplest way for somebody building a best shed for the first time. Tools required. Hammer, tape measures, clamps, tin snips, socket set, roofing silicon and corking gun, rivet gun, utility knife, multi-grips, permanent marker builder's pencil, chalk line, string line, spirit level, square, screwdrivers, Tech screw gun with appropriate drive bits. Electric drill, metal drill bits. Nibbler, alternatively tin snips. Grinder, hammer drill, extension leads. Ladders, scissor lifts on larger jobs. Nail bag, personal safety equipment. Earmuffs, safety glasses, gloves. Highly visible clothing, steel capped boots, sunscreen, wide brim hat. On screen is a list of all the tools required and personal safety equipment that can be used for reference. Note, it is recommended that clutch screwdrivers, tech guns are used rather than a cordless impact driver for drilling tech screws. The impact drivers place excessive force through the screw, often drilling at a much higher RPM compared to a clutch screwdriver. The excessive stress can cause the heads to snap off the screw, especially on the framing screws. The image on screen, shed terminology, is used for reference during construction of your shed. We need to check that the foundations have been correctly poured to suit the building that you are assembling. Refer to the engineering plans and check the overall width and length of the foundations are correct. Check that the foundations are square by measuring the diagonals and also check the foundations are level. For the purpose of this manual, we will assume that the slab is square and the overall dimensions are correct and true. It is now time to start building your best shed. Step 1. On the engineering drawings, locate the page showing the intermediate portal frame of the building. This drawing will show you the dimensions from the outside of the slab to the inside of the column, column width plus wall girt height. We will call this measurement, measurement A. Mark this dimension onto your foundation on all four corners of the building. Ensure you are measuring off the correct side of the foundation, side wall. Now flick a chalk line between these marks on both sides of the building. Later, when you stand the walls, these chalk lines will ensure the walls are straight and in the correct location prior to fixing the walls to the foundations. Measure the distance between the two chalk lines and double check this measurement matches the engineering drawings. This measurement will be used to make our rafters in step 3. This measurement will be known as measurement B. Step 2. Time now to unpack the shed kit, laying the materials out so that various components of the kit can be easily accessed or required throughout the build. Care must be taken when handling all components of the kit. Sheeting and flashings are easily scratched if incorrectly handled. Extreme care must be taken when handling and storing roller doors. Always ensure there is thick packaging under the door, preventing it being damaged from sharp objects on the ground like rocks. Do not ever sit or walk on your roller door. When laying out your materials, be sure to consider the possibility of wind and it blowing away and damaging any loose items. Step 3. Lay out the rafters and apex brackets onto the slab. The hole punchings on the rafters are located at different spacings top and bottom to suit the apex and haunch brackets. Once you have determined the top, apex of the rafter, ensure all the rafters have their punchings the same way and roll the rafters so they are standing on their flange. Mark the position of the roof purlins on the top flange of the rafters with a permanent marker or crayon. Tip. A temporary screw can be placed at the bottom side of the roof purlin, making installing the roof purlins in a later step much easier. 
See your engineering plans and bill of materials for quantity and spacing of your roof purlins. Now lay two rafters and one apex bracket together on the foundation. Using the apex bracket as a guide, put them at the approximate roof pitch, ensuring the two C-sections are touching each other. Put the apex bracket on the rafter and place two framing screws, one in each rafter, securing the apex bracket into position. It is critical that the bottom edge of the two rafters are still touching at the apex. Measure long point to long point of rafters and adjust until measurement equals measurement B as mentioned in step 1 of this instruction video. Place a second tech screw through the apex bracket into the rafter, locking the rafters at the correct roof pitch. Then bolt the apex bracket securely into position as per engineering plans. Ensure all bolts are tightened. If apex braces are required, they can now be installed as per engineering plans. Repeat this process with the other rafters, then move aside out of the way until required later. Step 4. Columns Lay the columns out on the slab at the approximate base spacings down both side walls of the building. Now place haunch brackets on the web side, flat side of the columns. Ensure that the top of the bracket is flush with the top of the column. Place one tech screw in the bracket to hold it in place. Now fix the bracket off according to engineering plans and tighten all bolts. Now fix your base cleat brackets to the base of the column as per engineering plans. Tip 1. Front and rear portals must have the web of the column facing in towards the center of the building. This is for aesthetics and may also be required to attach gable and roller doors to. One exception to this is if the gable end wall is open, no cladding, then the end portals will face outward so there is a flat surface to attach barge flashing to. Tip 2. For aesthetics, have the web face of each internal column facing the front of the building or the prominent opening. Step 5. Assembling the wall frames. Lay out your eave purlin at the top of your columns. Check engineering or bill of material for eave purlin material and length. With the helper, stand two adjacent columns on their flange. With the haunch bracket facing down, attach the eave purlin to the column using one framing screw on each end. A handy tip is to line the bottom of the columns with the chalk line on the slab. This ensures the wall is straight. It also positions the wall in the correct location for standing in the following step. Repeat this process for the remaining columns down this wall frame. On some buildings, top hat eaves may be used. Consult your engineering plans for details. We now need to mark sidewall girt spacing on the columns using a permanent marker. Check engineering plans for spacings of your sidewall girts. Lay out the bottom row of girts on the columns. The end of the sidewall girts will be flush with the outside edge of the columns that is, overall length of the slab. Screw the girt to the column on the first and last column. The top hat will be overlapped on the middle portal. With the tape measure, measure the overall length of the bottom row of top hats and adjust this length to suit the overall length of the building. Put a tech screw into the side of the top hat to lock this off at the correct length. Mark the position of the intermediate column on this bottom girt and after adjusting the column to your marks, place a tech screw through the girt into the column. At this stage, only place one frame screw per connection to hold the girts in place. Tip. If you have any windows in your side walls, ensure you allow adequate room for the window to fit between the second and third girt. Also check that the window will be at a desirable height when installed in between these girts. If you have a gutter side wall roller door, refer to the Best Sheds instruction manual for installation details. Install the remaining rows of girts, still with only one screw per connection. You are now ready to square the frame. Use a string line to ensure the bottoms of the columns are in a straight line, or alternatively, use the chalk line previously marked onto the slab. Measure the diagonals of the wall frame, ensuring that both measurements are equal. If not, adjust the wall until measurements are equal, making sure the base of the columns remains straight to the string line or chalk line. Once square, you can finish the frame by fixing the side girts and eave purlins completely off to the columns, according to engineering plans. Ensure the thread of the screws has fully engaged into the steel of the column. If sidewall bracing is required, fix into position as per engineering plans prior to cladding walls. Repeat this step for the other side wall. Step 6. Standing wall. Before lifting the wall, ensure you have the following ready to secure the frame to the foundations and to secure it from falling over. Hammer drill with appropriate masonry drill bit. Masonry anchors. Hammer appropriate socket and ratchet or rattle gun, and temporary props, bracing and ropes. 
Appropriate tie-down points, ropes and props are required to assist holding the wall vertical until you have all hold-down bolts and rafters secured in place. The larger the shed, the more ropes and props you will need. Do not attempt to lift the walls on a windy day or when strong winds are predicted. With the assistance of some competent helpers and or a crane, one side wall can now be stood into position. Carefully lift the wall up and secure the wall with props and ropes. Larger sheds may require a crane to safely lift the wall frames and rafters. Position the inside edge of the columns to the previously marked chalk line on the foundation. On each column, drill holes through base cleats into the concrete with a hammer drill with an appropriate sized masonry drill bit. Secure with appropriate anchor bolts as per engineering plans. Ensure all holes are clean of any dust or debris before placing masonry anchors. Check that all anchors are tightened down sufficiently and check columns are roughly plumb using a spirit level. Readjust props if necessary. Repeat the process for the opposite wall. Step 7. Installing first rafter. A number of factors will need to be considered to determine how you will lift the rafters into place. You may also need scissor lifts and or mobile scaffolding to safely work at height to install rafters and other components of your shed. Follow WHS guidelines for safe working practices. Some factors to consider. Span of your building, rafter material size, eave and apex height, access, tip. Best to start from one end of the building, normally the rear wall or wall with the least favorable access and work your way towards the front. Carefully lift the previously assembled rafters and align onto the haunch brackets. Using quick release clamps, temporarily clamp the rafters to the haunch bracket. Ensure that the rafter is hard up against the column and that the punchings are aligned through the haunch bracket into the rafter. Put one tech screw through the haunch bracket into the rafter to secure it in place. Install frame bolts as per engineer's details. Only do them up finger tight for now. The center of the rafter should be supported temporarily until the end wall mullions are in place. Check that both columns are plumb in both directions. Adjust the props as required. A second frame screw is now put in place to lock the portal in location. Now tighten the bolts and remove the clamp. Step 8. Installing end wall mullions if required. Check engineer's drawings to see if your building requires mullions. If required, locate the mullions and bolt the base cleat to the bottom of the end wall mullion as per engineering specifications. Some buildings may require an end wall mullion bracket to space the mullion off the rafter. End wall mullions are installed so that the web of the C-section is perpendicular to the rafters. The mullion can be installed with C-section facing either way. For aesthetics, it is best to face the flat side of the C-section towards any prominent openings, particularly any side wall opening. Flick a chalk line on the foundation, the wall girt thickness in between the columns, and then mark the position of the mullion or mullions as per engineering plans. The mullions are offset the thickness of the end wall girts from the slab edge. Stand the end wall mullion onto the marks on the foundation. Plumb the mullion and clamp the top of the mullion to the rafter. Tip. Before bolting the mullion to the foundation, check the height of top of the mullion to the top of the rafter. Mullion may need to be cut down in length if it is going to interfere with roof purlins or roof sheeting. Drill holes through base cleats into the foundation and secure with appropriate anchor bolt as per engineering plans. Check mullions are still plumb and fix the end wall mullion to the rafter as per engineering plans. Step 9. Installing remaining rafters. Now fit remaining rafters as shown in Step 7. Working on the next portal closest to the rafter previously installed. Be sure to brace all rafters before removing any lifting devices. A good way to brace each rafter is to run at least two rows of roof purlins, one each side of the roof up close to the apex of the roof, back to the first rafter installed that has the mullions installed and with ropes and props to hold everything steady. Ensure all rafters are parallel and plumb and that all bolts are tightened. On larger buildings, it'll be necessary to install all the purlins in at least the first bay and diagonal strap bracing to hold the heavier rafters in place. Step 10. Fixing Roof Purlins Lay out the roof purlins onto the rafters using the temporary screws previously installed from Step 3. The roof purlins will be installed flush with the outer face of the rafters on the first and last portal frames, end walls. Fix into position with one screw per connection initially to hold purlins in place. Ensure that the correct percentage overlap is achieved as per engineering drawings for the roof purlins. Ensure that all end walls and all intermediate rafters are plumb. 
Ensure that the spacing between the rafters is the same as the spacing between the columns. Fully fix the roof purlins in place as per engineering plans. If roof bracing is required, fix into position as per engineering plans prior to sheeting the roof. Step 11. Fixing knee braces if required. Refer to engineering plans for size, fitting location and fixing detail. On back-to-back -back frames, it is required to notch the ends of apex and knee braces to fit in between back-to-back -back frames. Apex braces should already be installed on the rafter from step 3. If not installed, install them now as per engineering plans. Step 12. End wall framing with a roller door. We firstly need to establish where the roller doors will be located. You'll get this information from the engineering plans. Some things to consider when marking out for roller doors. The size of column and roller door post. This may determine where you can or cannot locate your roller doors. Is the roller door to be fixed to separate roller door columns? Or is the roller door attached to a shed column on one side or perhaps even both sides? If two or more doors across a gable end, are these two roller doors sharing a roller door post? To work out the frame opening of the roller door, we need to find the curtain width of the roller door. The easiest way to find the curtain width of the roller door is off the manufacturer's label on the door or by physically measuring the door curtain with a tape measure. The roller door curtain sits on the inside of the roller door posts. The depth of the roller door track each side of the opening. Track width will vary with the roller door size. Measure your track width. So, the opening size between the roller door posts is the roller door curtain width minus two roller door track widths. Flick a chalk line on the foundation in between the columns and then mark the position of the roller door post or posts as per engineering plans. The roller door posts are installed in the same line as the end portal frame. End roller doors are supplied with C-section roller door posts to frame the opening. Website, flat side of the C-section will face into the building to provide a surface to mount the roller doors to. Fix the base cleat to the bottom of the roller door posts and tighten bolts as per engineering plans. Stand the end wall roller door post onto the marks on the foundation. Plumb the post and clamp to the rafter. Mark the top and bottom sides of the rafter onto the column. Bring the post back to the ground and notch the post, creating a bracket utilizing the waste material. Stand post back onto its marks. Plumb and clamp the top to the rafters again. Drill holes through base cleats into the foundation and secure with appropriate anchor bolt as per engineering plans. Double check mullions are still plumb and fix the roller door post to the rafter as per engineering plans. Tip. Spray all cuts of gal columns or posts with cold gal to prevent any corrosion. Sidewall roller doors will use Z sections as roller door posts. Step 13. Roller door headers. The maximum opening height is the height specified on the manufacturer's label located on the roller door drum or axle. Check overall height of your roller door rolled up and ensure that the door will fit in the space allowed above the header without hitting roof purlins or roof sheeting. If there's not enough clearance, the header will need to be lowered. Head height can be lower than height specified on label if required. More of the door curtain will remain on the drum when the door is fully closed. Mark the desired opening height up the inside of both roller door posts. This will be the bottom mark for our header beam. Screw an end wall girt bracket to each post. Number of screws as per engineering drawings. Use a clamp to stop it spinning as you drill the brackets to the post. The bracket is set back the header beam thickness, approximately 2 mm, from the back edge of the post, so that when the header beam is in place, it is perfectly aligned with the post. Measure the distance between the roller door post at the head height and check this length against the roller door header length supplied. The header may need to be slightly trimmed to length. With help, lift the beam into place and clamp into position. Adjust the beam for level and screw into position. Step 14. End wall framing. The end wall girts will run in between the columns and roller door posts. Mark the end wall girts on the inside edge of the columns and roller door posts with a permanent marker. Spacings as per the engineering drawings. The end wall girts may be at different spacings with the side wall girts. Caution. When screwing the end wall girt brackets to the column, a clamp is advised to ensure the bracket is secure and doesn't spin. Fix the bracket into place with appropriate number of screws as per engineering plans. No, the end wall girt brackets are different for 64mm to 120mm top hats. Check the details on your engineering plans for correct attachment detail. If your building has any end wall mullion or mullions, you need to mark the position of the end wall girts on the mullions. No brackets are required on the mullions as they are already set back the correct distance to screw the end wall girt straight to them. 
Tip. A chalk line can be used to mark the end wall girt position onto the mullions. This will ensure the end wall girts are straight. Now fix the end wall girts in place, overlapping the girts on the end wall mullions. Number of screws as per engineering plans. If diagonal strap bracing is required, fix into position as per engineering plans prior to cladding the wall. Step 15. Fly bracing if required. Please check and install fly bracing if required as per your engineering plans. Step 16. Sidewall sheeting. Before sheeting the sidewalls, ensure that the wall frame is square and the columns are plumb. If your building has any wall insulation, it needs to be installed as you sheet the walls. Locate the sidewall sheets from your sheeting pack. Sidewall sheets will be approximately 20 millimeters longer than your column height. Check the bill of material for quantity and lengths. When installing the sheeting, ensure you overlap the sheeting correctly. Stand the first sheet. Keep the sheet flush with top of the eave purlin, ensuring that the sheets overlap the foundation of the building. Check each sheet is level. Adjust sheet as required to keep sheeting true. Using the required number of wall screws as per engineering plans, fix the wall sheets using a straight edge or chalk line to ensure that screws are placed in a straight line. Ensure that the wall remains square while sheeting and that the sheets are fixed square to the frame. If there are any roller door openings, cut the sheeting as required to match the framed opening. Short sheets above the opening are cut out of a full length side wall sheet. If required, cut the last wall sheet flush to the end of the wall girts. Step 17. End wall cladding. Locate the end wall sheets length from the bill of material. End wall sheets are supplied all the same length, at the longest length required. Take care to ensure the long sheets don't fold over on themselves when lifting into place. Make sure that you overlap the sheeting correctly. These sheets will need to be cut to the rake of the roof on site. Keep the bottom of the end wall cladding level with the bottom of the side wall cladding. That is approximately 20 millimeters below slab height. Using the required number of wall screws as per engineering plans, fix end wall sheets. Use a straight edge or chalk line to ensure screws are placed in a straight line in the center of the wall girt. If there are any roller door openings in the end wall, cut the sheeting as required to match the framed opening. Short sheets above the opening are cut out of a full length end wall sheet. Ensure you optimize waste cuts. The last sheet will need to be cut to width so that it finishes flush to the outside of the side wall girts. Once all of the end wall sheets are in position, the next step is to trim the tops of the end wall sheets with the roof sheets. Flick a chalk line at the underside of the roof sheeting. Trim the sheets to this chalk line using an electric nibbler or tin snips. Flick a chalk line marking the center of the top lip of the rafter and screw the sheets off to this line. Note, on windy days or on larger buildings, the top of the end wall sheets may need to be trimmed and fixed as each sheet is installed to prevent them being damaged or falling back on themselves. Step 18. Guttering. Work out the number and location of your downpipes. Number of downpipes are provided on the bill of materials. Cut the downpipe nozzles out of the gutters to suit number of downpipes. Ensure you place silicon on all rivets and around the nozzle on the inside of the gutter. If stormwater drainage is already installed, ensure you line the nozzles with laid PVC pipes. Also ensure that you strip the protective plastic off the gutter and off the stop ends. Install stop ends on the appropriate gutters. Ensure you use plenty of silicon around the stop end to the gutter. Now mark the fall of the gutter with a chalk line onto the wall sheeting. Gutters fall to downpipes and a minimum fall of 1 to 500. The gutter brackets come partially ganged together with other gutter brackets. Simply bend to snap the gutter brackets apart as demonstrated. Gutter brackets are to be installed to the ridge of the wall sheeting at maximum 1.2 meter spacings. Gutter brackets will follow the previously marked chalk line indicating the required fall. Ensure you place silicon on all gutter joins. Hook the gutter onto the ends of the gutter brackets and rotate into place. Fold down taps on gutter bracket to hold gutter in place. Step 19. Roof sheeting. Before fixing the roof sheeting into position, check that all columns and end mullions are plumb and straight. Check all roof strap bracing is in place as per engineer's drawings. Check to see if insulation is supplied for underneath the roof sheets. If so, cut insulation to length and install as you are laying the roof sheets. Turn up the valley of the sheeting along the ridge line of roof cladding with a shifter or pliers to approximately a 60 degree angle. 
This is called weathering the sheets and prevents rainwater and leaves egressing up under the ridge flashings in high winds. This is best done on the ground before installing the sheets. Working off an elevated platform, carefully lift the first sheet into place, allowing approximately 50 mm overhang into the gutter, following engineering drawings for correct screw patterns. Please follow all work health and safety guidelines when working at heights. Do not attempt to install roof sheets on a windy day. Ensure that you overlap the sheeting correctly. Step 20. Flashings. Barge capping. Peel the protective plastic coating back on all four barges. Lift the first length of the barge capping into position and align the top of the barge with the apex of the building. Screw through the top leg of the barge with roof screws into the ridge, top, roof purlin. Ensure that the face of the barge is plumb. Plumb cut the top, ridge end of the second barge. Sit the second barge capping into position. The barge will need to be notched around the gutter and a plumb cut put on the front face of the barge. Hold a short level plumb on the face of the barge to get the plumb cut angle. Cut the notch for the gutter and the plumb cut out of the barge using tin snips. Fully screw the barge off using wall screws or rivets on the front face of the barge flashing into the wall sheets and roof screws through the top leg of the flashing into the roof purlins. Repeat this step for the barges on the other end of the building. Ridge capping. When installing ridge capping, ensure the ridge is flush with the face of the barge flashings. Screw ridge capping into roof purlins on both sides of the flashing. If using roll top ridge, the open end of the ridge needs to be capped by trimming the ridge as demonstrated. This is only for roll top ridge. Standard flat ridge will simply finish flush with the face of the barges. Corner flashings. Locate corner flashings. Peel off the protective plastic film. Each flashing may need to be slightly trimmed to length. Mark and trim with tin snips as required. Use either coloured pop rivets or wall screws to attach the flashings to the wall sheeting. Line the screws up with the wall girts for aesthetics. Put two screws, one each side of the flashing, top and bottom of the flashing and at each wall girt. Ensure that the corner flashing is flush to the bottom of the wall sheets. Additional screws may be required to make the flashing secure and watertight. Opening flashings. Locate opening flashings. Check the bill of material for length and quantity. Lengths may vary. Peel off the protective plastic film. Starting with the side opening flashings, the bottom and top of the side opening flashings need to be notched around the concrete on the bottom and around the roller door header at the top. Measure and mark the notches and cut them out using tin snips. Use either coloured pop rivets or wall screws to attach the flashings to the roller door post. Line the screws up with the wall girts for aesthetics. Now the header flashing. The header flashing will be notched both ends around the already installed side flashings. Measure and mark the notches and again cut them out with tin snips. Use either coloured pop rivets or wall screws to attach the flashings to the roller door header. Evenly space the screws at maximum 1.2 meter centers. Step 21. Downpipes. Locate the downpipes and remove the protective plastic film. Measure and cut downpipe to required length and then fix downpipes to nozzle with pop rivets or wall screws. Downpipes are not tapered and cannot be joined. They are supplied the length of the wall height. PVC drainage plumbing may need to be brought up to top of slab height. The bottom of the downpipe is fixed in place with a roof screw from the inside of the building. This screw will go through the lowest wall girt, through the wall sheeting into the downpipe. To do this, you'll need two people, one on the inside and one on the outside. The person on the outside needs to plumb the downpipe and hold it in place. Ensure hands are well away from where the screw will be drilling. From the inside, slowly drill the screw into place. Finish. You have now finished building your shed. However, to complete, please check these final critical steps. 1. Make a final check of the structure. 2. Ensure that all base cleats have been tightened down firmly. 3. Check that all roof and wall screws are in place. 4. Brush the complete structure down including the roof, with a soft hair broom to remove any swarf, metal dust, and filings caused by angle grinder and tech screws. Then blow the entire building down with a blower inside and out. 5. Remove any steel particles, screws, and rivets which may puncture a car tire. 6. Now stand back and congratulate yourself on a job well done. 7. Read and understand the maintenance and warranty of your building. Ensure that you do not backfill any soil or similar against any part of your building.